So, if this video looks familiar with all these planes and all this landing gear lying around, that's because we're doing it over again. Yes, this is a tutorial redo, and that's because I found a better way, thanks to a community member, how to do landing gear that doesn't require sensors. So I'm just going to walk you through these planes again, just for old time's sake, and then I'll show you the new way of doing landing gear. Let's go. All right, so the first plane we have here is the ME163, and it is using a skid for landing and these wheels that drop off at a certain speed. And I just want to show you the different kinds of landing gear really quick before we get started on the actual tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how these drop off. Boop! When it reaches a certain speed. Oh! I forgot it does that. Anyways, these landing gear drop off and the plane continues to fly away and then it can put the uh, skid up. Whoa! That's starting to scare me. And fly until it runs out of gas in about... Oh, I don't know, in real life, seven minutes in the game? I don't know, maybe three minutes? Then when it's going for the landing, it puts the landing gear back down for the landing. So that's the way the ME163 works, except the wheels, I don't think they did that. All right, so I respawned everything, and the uh, ME163 is now quiet. We're going to move on to the aisle two. And what we're going to do is we're just looking at landing gear here, uh, and I'm going to show you how to duplicate the functionality of some of these with the uh, new component by Jacob. But first I want to show you how it looks and what it does. So if I push this button, the landing gear starts to go up. And then once it reaches the top, the landing gear bay doors will close. Ta-da! Magic. OK. So this is using my old microprocessor. And while it works great, you can see that everything opens and closes properly. The problem was that this sensor down here was taking inconsistent readings in the air and these doors would open sometimes when you were rolling or pitching too fast. I don't know if it's a bug with the game or just some kind of lag when it's uh, calculating distance in the air, but it didn't work properly. So I'm going to show you how to fix this landing gear with a new component and show you a, a few other ways to use a component. But first let's look at the B17 landing gear here. And this one is really simple to make. All it does is it goes upward and sticks out of the wing because if they were to belly flop, but they wanted the wing, or not the wing, but the wheel to stick out a little bit. So I'm just gonna push the button and you'll see it goes straight up. It's just a pitch up. And uh, if we look, this is the front of the plane and it pitches forward towards us. All right, let me go ahead and show you the B25. Now the B25 is a little more hard to duplicate. We won't be doing this today. Um, this also uses, you can see a sensor, but the reason this one is so complicated is because I didn't have enough space for the landing gear. This landing gear should also actually be on this side. And so what I did to compensate for the issues I had with the plane, I moved it to the back. And then you will see that when I push the button, this landing gear will move upward and inward. So that gives me a little bit more space by making the bar shorter and then folding it up. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. There it goes, and you'll see it move upwards. The sensor gets a reading, and it starts to close. The landing gear in the front are doing basically a pivot and shutting, which is really nice. OK, so that's how this one works. And uh, you could probably duplicate it with the component. Uh, it's just a little more complicated and uh, was just kind of a fix for having issues with the uh, B25 landing gear. The next one is the B24, and the B24 has some nice landing gear. If I click the button, you're going to see that this one just folds up. So this is opposite of the B17, and this is easy to duplicate as well. So the three landing gear I'm going to be showing you today is the B24 landing gear coming upwards, the B20, oh sorry, the B17 coming upwards, and the IL2 with the doors and the landing gear going upward as well. So this is the three I'm going to show you today real quick with the new component. But first, I just want you to see this. So this landing gear is kind of cool because how it folds up in there. Let's go ahead and push the button. And you'll see uh, this one pivots all the way up. It also has a sensor on it, which I probably don't need anymore. And then it closes the bomb bay doors. And so that's just a different type of landing. I'm just really trying to show you different types of landing gear so that you don't get stuck always creating the same kind of landing gear for each plane. And World War II planes did have different types of landing gear going up and sideways and inwards and outwards. 
and uh, it's always fun to recreate them. But let's get to the component now, and I'll show you how to build some landing gear. All right, so here is our test bed for the landing gear. We have the uh, IL-2 with the landing gear and the bay doors that close and open. We have a sort of a B-17 where it goes upwards, and we have a B-24 where it goes to the side. Now, all of these landing gear are possible with the component, and you could probably make a few different other types just by playing around, but I'm just gonna show you these three, and uh, the main one right here is the one you're probably going to wanna learn first, so I'm gonna do this one first, which is with the doors and with the landing gear. So we're gonna grab the component, drop it down, and we're gonna go ahead and connect the button to it. Bado. And then this little extra guy here is kind of a nice feature that was added. So if we do a light indicator, let's do an indicator, not a light. Um, if we drop an indicator on here, we can go ahead and put it right there and paint it, oh, I don't know, green. So the indicator lets you know when the landing gear is down. So it's kind of a nice little feature that was added on. You don't have to connect it, of course, but if you want to, you can. And so we just connect us to the batteries we have back there. And we'll come back into this mode and connect our different uh, pivots. So we have one pivot here that says wheels and we have one that says base. So we're gonna go ahead and hook the wheel pivot right here. Boop. And we're gonna hook the base. Boop, and one more boop, boop. So what's gonna happen is I may have to invert one of these, but we'll find out really quick when we try it. And uh, that's really easy to do. So what we're gonna go ahead is test it. So depending on how you place your pivots, if you don't do them the same way and you hook the component, one may go one way and then one may go the other way. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna test it by clicking the button here. And we'll see if the landing gears goes up. And oh, look at that. One's closing one way and the other one's closing the other way. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna do one of two things. We could flip our pivot if we want them to be the same way or if we have enough room in our airplane and we don't mind adding a little more logic, we can go ahead and find an inverter uh, right here. Boop. And put the inverter down. And so what you do is you run your bay door to the inverter. And this one was the one flipping outwards. So we'll go ahead and connect that up. And so now this number is coming in inverted to this. So if it's a plus one, it's gonna be a minus one, and it's gonna open or shut the opposite way. So let's go ahead and test again, and now it should be working a bit better. Okay, so now I have another issue. The issue here is when I set up my original landing gear tutorial, I had the landing gear go extremely slow to close. So it's at a 0.2. So if we put this at a 0.5, and then we can put our bays at maybe 0.4, just to slow them down a bit. Let's see, 0.4. We will get a nice landing gear, slow speed up, slow speed down kind of feeling. Let's try it. There we go, closes and closes. There we go, very nice. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up again. And there you go. So right now you see when the landing gear comes down, it was kind of pushing on these doors. So if we want, we can go ahead and probably put the speed to about the same amount, and that will probably balance out the doors. I may look, need to look at the actual pivot speed. Oh yes, so we got a gear ratio of one four. Probably want to put these the same so we have all the same speed all around. Okay, also I noticed that the light did not come on. So, oh, that's because we didn't hook it up. There you go, let's hook the light up. It is hooked to power? Yes, it is. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and give this one more try. So you'll see that the light is now on, indicating that the landing gear is down. And then I go ahead and push the button. Landing gear goes up. Doors close. Okay. Then we'll come back over here. Lights off. Put it down. Landing gear comes down. Doors open. And so that's it. So it's worth noting that you can make some changes to the component so you can change uh, if the gear are closed or a minus one or a one, depending on what your pivot's doing. You could also open your bay doors open a little bit more if they need to be wider open and change your open position to, you know, 0 0.5 or whatever you need. 
to get the landing gear in if you're doing something fancy. And, you know, of course you could swap these around. It's all depending on how you set up your pivots originally. But uh, usually the default settings are just fine and you may only have to go ahead and do what we did, which is throw an inverter down and uh, reverse one of the doors. All right, so let me go ahead and show you really quick these other landing gear configurations. And the reason I want to show you this is even though the landing gear are doing the same thing, you can make your plane look a bit different. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up these lights just for fun. Not really needed for the tutorial, but they look kind of cool. So I'm going to go ahead and add that one, add that one, and we're going to paint it. Let's see here. Paint this one red, and this one yellow, just for difference. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do this one first which is more of a B-17 kind of motion. There are no landing gear doors, so we're basically building the same one here, but we're using the same component or the microprocessor and not doing any landing gear doors. So this is super easy to set up. All we have to do is hook up our button, hook up our light if we want to hook up our light, find the wheels, add it to the pivot, spawn it, because we don't have any doors, and then we go ahead and we'll click the button. If I hooked up all the power, it should just go on up. And that is it. You've made landing gear in about two seconds with just one microprocessor, a button, a light, and a pivot. All right, the next one, and I'm going to show you there's going to be an issue with this one, but we're going to fix it. But I'm going to go ahead and show you again. We're just going to drop our component down here that is now yellow, apparently. We're going to hook up our button. Boop! and hook up our light. And of course we have the wheels and that is it. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what this looks like now. Because we have a super thin wing here, we're gonna have a little bit of an issue with this wheel, but I'll show you what happens. All right, so we have an issue and the issue is that the landing gear is trying to go up in and there's no space for it to go completely flat. Now we could make the wing thicker, but usually on a fighter plane, that doesn't work. So what we're going to do is tweak our landing gear to lay in a better position. Okay, so all we have to do is make enough room for that wheel to sit right in this hole. Now we could move the pivot a certain way, but the easiest way I found is just to alter how your landing gear looks. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this back a little bit. I may have to go ahead and uh, tweak it a bit, but all I'm going to do is make a landing gear bar that kind of goes back and you can go like this if you want. Um, you could do it several different ways. I'm going to go for this one. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and, oops, like that. I'm going to go ahead and grab the landing gear, delete this one, and put it right here. Now, I'm not really liking that, so I'm going to go ahead and tweak it a little bit more. It looks like I have enough room to like move this all the way. Let's see, can I do it? I can do it all the way down there, which is cool. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and put a bar there, put a bar here, and you know, we can tweak it. We could put the uh, upside down wedge here, give it a little bit more of a landing gear look to it. And that is it. Now watch what's going to happen. Just by moving that wheel back one place, one block, we're going to get a different look on the wing. So we didn't have to make the wing wider. All we had to do was move the wheel back by one. And watch what happens. There you go. So it sits flat, or nearly flat. It might be a little bit off. But that is a good landing gear profile, at least for most of the fighter planes. And that's an easy way to do it. So just to recap, we have the landing gear that goes up and down into the landing gear bay. We have a bomb bay that you just hook up the component and it slides right back up in. And then we have the landing gear that goes from left to right and what it does is hide itself inside the wing and you can have a relatively thin wing. So this is only three blocks. So that is a really nice way to do landing gear if I think the P40 had this landing gear and maybe the 109. I can't remember. I think the 109 did for sure. But it's a way to hide your landing gear in the wing and you're getting a low profile hangout here. 
But uh, there's several different ways to do landing gear. You can experiment, but I think this component is going to help you, and it's going to help you a lot if you were looking at my old tutorial and we're trying to fight with the sensor. Uh, this is a great way to fix that issue. So if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. I will see you next time.